from Cresco Lab CEO Charlie Bactel now joins us on Small Cap Power. Charlie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Give us an introduction to Cresco Labs. Sure. So Charlie Bachtel, CEO, co-founder. Uh, Cresco Labs is a uh, cannabis operator in the U.S., operating in six states, focusing on highly regulated uh, cannabis markets. Full operator, vertically integrated, cultivation, processing, manufacturing, wholesale distribution, and retail. I was uh, reading up about Cresco Labs, and there's a lot of emphasis on compliance. Talk to us about that. Sure, a lot of it stems from our background. Um, the three original founders uh, all come from the banking industry and on the operations and compliance and legal side and sales. Um, and so we were part of uh, another industry that went from you know, quasi unregulated to hyper regulated in a very short period of time. And uh, cannabis is a similar type of story, uh, unregulated industry becoming hyper regulated very quickly. The fact that you know compliance is such an important feature of your operations, uh, what does that say to investors who could be looking at you? You know, it's, a, it's critically important in this space to make sure that um, any operator is operating in that manner. Uh, most of the markets that have come online in the last three years in the U.S are highly regulated, compliance-focused, limited license states. So um, can't emphasize the importance enough of being a, a high-quality, compliance-focused operator that also knows how to operate a real business. Uh, what are some of the challenges that this industry faces that you are now preparing to overcome? I, I think the, this industry is, uh, is faced with a myriad of challenges. It's a, it's a very... Um, Any time, again, you have, a, you have an industry that is experiencing regulation for the first time and where you have a state-by-state -state, uh, fabric, um, where Illinois is different than Wisconsin, is different than California, is different than Arizona, um, its, its challenges are everywhere. So uh, problem solving, it's, uh, it's one of the core values of our company. And you've got to make sure that you can figure out how to deal with adversity because it's everywhere. Uh, which space of the cannabis industry are you in? So one of the things that we had to do as one of the limited operators in these highly regulated markets is we wanted to make sure that we had a product offering for everybody. There was going to be multiple market segments that come into these highly regulated, especially medical programs. And we wanted to make sure that we had um, products not only in form, but also in look and feel and messaging that was appropriate for each one of those segments. So we have, we have, a, um, we have a product category for your traditional cannabis consumer. We have a product category for your very medicinally focused, non-traditional cannabis consumer looking for that alternative to traditional medicine. Um, we have a line that's geared towards that sophisticated and educated cannabis consumer. And then we have an edibles line that we developed with a, a James Beard award-winning chef, Mindy Siegel, which is, it's great. Yeah, great product, great product line. Tell us more about that edibles line. Yeah, for us it was, um, it just made a lot of sense to try and work with somebody who is a professional of the highest level in an existing industry that had a direct correlation of what we were doing. We were making edible products. So, you know, working with a chef seemed like a pretty good idea to us. And uh, we never thought we'd be able to get a James Beard award-winning dessert chef to, to, to be on the team, but she was really excited to do it. And we developed uh, really two, two lines with her, one that's very, a lot like the desserts you would have in her restaurants, chocolate forward, decadent, indulgent, premium, and then a more fun and whimsical and uh, approachable line. So Mindy's Artisanal Edibles and Mindy's Kitchen. Isn't the space of derivatives and topicals and edibles going to take a much longer time to see that kind of demand compared to the flower? You know, I'm not sure because when it comes down to it, you know, everybody likes to talk about the, the potential upside of this industry being a 35, 50, 75 billion dollar industry over the next 10 years or so. Uh, the way that that happens is not by the current customer base consuming more. That's new people coming into this space. And an edible or a vaporizer pen is a lot more approachable. Uh, product form and consumption method than traditional flour. So I think we see a lot more opportunity for new people to try those types of forms. And uh, how comfortable are you in terms of your finances today? Finances are great. You know, we're, we're in a great position. We're in the middle of a, a capital raising round right now, our last private private, um, before we do do the uplist at the beginning of Q4. Excellent. And what can we expect from the company in the next 12 months? You know, continued growth uh, with six states under our umbrella currently. We're looking to add three more before the end of the year. Um, we already have a footprint of about 88 million residents that live in those six states, the largest of any operator in the U.S., and we're going to expand on that. Cresco Labs will be positioned as the largest operator in the U.S. by the end of the year. Wonderful. Wish you all the best uh, for Cresco Labs. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.